Hello again everyone. Um, the subject of this video is a, um, an article that uh, Michael Moore had written on his, his website uh, on the 27th. And this, uh, the title is uh, basically five reasons why Donald Trump will win. And I'm going to do uh, a critique of this. He has five whole reasons. So we'll do a critique of this, and um, I believe everybody knows who Michael Moore is. Um, you know, he's a pretty famous guy. Here's a picture of him right here. Um, he's way over to the left of the political spectrum. Uh, the man is also a walking bundle of contradictions. Uh, it seems to me that the intellectual half of his brain, the left side, is, is uh, perpetually at war with the right side of his brain. They're in conflict. There's this bag and go for it. You know, this is the analytical and the left side and this is the emotional side. And he can look at things really well with his left brain, but his right brain, the emotional side, doesn't let him interpret the facts the way, you know, the rest of us would look at them. Um, so the analytical part of his mind says, you know, Donald Trump is going to win. He looks at all these facts and he says, yeah, he's going to win. But the emotional part says, you know, the guy's a schmuck, he's no good, and uh, worse, he calls him a lot of nasty names. And he says that Hillary Clinton will win. Um, so let me just read the first paragraph of this just to give you an idea of where he's coming from. He says Trump's going to win, but here's where he's coming from the first paragraph of his, um, his article, and I, I really recommend you go to his website, uh, Michael Moore, I believe it's michaelmoore.com, and just go ahead and read it, because it's pretty interesting, especially the conservatives who are trying to understand where liberals are coming from, you know, because we can't, we don't, you know, it's like a dog and cat thing. You know, dogs go, what's a cat all about? You know, a strange creature. So that's where, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a dog guy and I don't get along with cat people. So I don't know, I'm a cat person. It's like a liberal. Whoa. Anyway, here's, here's the first paragraph. I'm sorry to be the, he said, friends. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but I gave it to you straight last summer when I told you that Donald Trump would be the Republican nominee for president. And now I have even more awful, depressing news for you. Donald J. Trump is going to win in November. This wretched, ignorant, dangerous, part-time clown and full-time sociopath is going to be our next president, President Trump. Go ahead and say the words, because you'll be saying them for the next four years, President Trump. Never in my life have I wanted to be proven wrong more than I do right now. And then he goes on, he takes six pages to, to make his points. Um, so... Here's just, here's just four, five points. I put them on the board here. This five points just uh, goes Rust Belt Brexit is his first point, angry white men, the Hillary problem, distressed Sanders vote, and the Jesse Ventura effect. Uh, and that's his five points. So we'll just, you know, go, go through them here real quickly. Um, the first one is the Midwest math. Now this, he makes sense here. Because he calls it the, the, uh, the, it's the Rust Belt or America's Brexit. Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. That's where he sees. Uh, the Brexit states, he calls them. Trump is going to get a lot of voters here. And so forth. And then he says, uh, and he goes right to the heart of the matter. He says, well, maybe, you know, Trump's going to get votes. Maybe it's because he said correctly that the Clinton support of NAFTA helped to destroy the industrial states of the upper Midwest. And uh, you know, Trump is going to hammer Clinton on this and her support of TPP and other trade policies that have royally screwed the people of these four states. So Moore gets it right, exactly right. You know, these lousy trade deals have screwed over the American worker, and yet he loves Hillary the person that did it. Um, and then he goes on and on, and I, you know, I mean. Uh, and the second point, the last stand of the angry man. 
white man. Now this is the liberals' favorite talking point. That the angry white man, the man with no uh, college education, basically they're a redneck and they look down on him. And they're saying, you know, that's Trump support. And yeah, he has 30 something percent. Uh, but there's a lot more than angry white men. And this is something that he, he doesn't get. He uh, more doesn't get because there's a lot of angry pe people, just not white men. There's, um, you know, black men, black women that are really, really angry. I mean, they were brought here. Black people were brought to this country involuntarily against their will and where they worked for no pay for 250 years until finally slavery was abolished in 1865, and then it didn't get much better for another hundred years more. But they worked. You know, they worked in uh, farms and ranches. They worked in factories. They worked in the railroads. They worked in the mines. Everywhere black people worked, and they put in sweat equity. They got, you know, 400 years of sweat equity, just like white people, into this country. And what do the elitists, the corporatists do, the Hillary Clinton, her crowd do? They bring in immigrants to take their jobs. They got no respect. So there's angry, angry black people as well. I mean, it's just not angry white people. And um, I mean, Hispanics, you know, I live in Arizona. I know some Hispanics and they don't like seeing these immigrants come across the border and working for half of what they're getting. Uh, a lot of their jobs are in the service, the landscaping service, whatever. And they have other jobs as well, driving and all sorts of jobs. But the immigrants come over, and, and, and these illegals, and, they take, and they, they, they'll accept half. It used to be when I was a kid, um, uh, the, um, the feds would run around and start busting restaurants and everything, rounding these people up that were working for less than minimum wage. Now they don't. I, you never hear of feds, at least I haven't in Arizona. Here are feds busting restaurants at other places and rounding up, you know, these illegals that are stealing jobs from people that are here. They, they don't do it anymore. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of angry people besides, besides white men. That's just silly. And then um, the next one is this, which is pretty interesting, is um, the Hillary problem. And then he stated... He has stated this a couple of times. He said, uh, but her vote for the Iraq war made me promise her that I would never vote for her again. To date, I haven't broken that promise. For the sake of preventing a proto-fascist, Trump, from becoming our commander-in-chief, I'm breaking that promise. I sadly believe that Hil Clinton will find a way, Hillary Clinton will find a way to get us in some kind of military action. Yeah, she's going to go to war. Um, Putin, he's all prepared for it. He's basically said on a number of occasions, if she gets in, yeah, he's preparing for war. She's going to try to kick him out of Syria. And probably uh, Hillary Clinton will um, attack Kim Jong-un. And they've just been, man, they've been really wanting to take him out. So, yeah, they'll try that and buck up against the Chinese. But here he, sa he says, uh, talking about Hillary, he says, our biggest problem here isn't Trump, it's Hillary. She is hugely unpopular. Nearly 70% of all voters think she is untrustworthy and dishonest. She represents the old way of politics, not really believing in anything other than what can get you elected. Young women are among her biggest detractors. Uh, the kids don't like her. Millennials don't like her. Uh, the enthusiasm just isn't there for her. Uh, and because this election is going to come down to just one thing, who drags the most people out of the House and gets them to the polls, Trump right now is in the catbird seat. Hillary can't motivate people to get them to the polls. So, you know, he's right about that. But he's still... Uh, voting for Hillary. And then finally, the depressed, uh, or the number four, the depressed Sanders vote. And rather than call it depressed, uh, you know, he calls it depressed, but, uh, you know, because too many people mistake that for suppressed, like what the IRS did to the Tea Party, and still doing to conservatives. Um, he, he means probably reluctant or unenthusiastic. 
Uh, millennials, he says here, millennials, will, you know, they'll go to the polls, but not in any, you know, not with any enthusiasm to vote for Hillary. Uh, she's not getting nearly what Obama got from young people. Uh, part of it is the um, is the tuition thing. Trump came right out. I mean, Michael Moore doesn't mention this, but Trump came right out and said, "Look," he says, "Here's what we're going to do with the student loans: twelve and a half percent for five years of so whatever salary you're making. You pay twelve and a half percent of your salary for five years, and after that, the loan is forgiven. But you got to make those payments." It seems like a really fair deal to me because a lot of times what you do when you get in these loans is you're just paying interest. You're not paying anything on the principal, you're just paying interest, 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 like credit card debt. You know, you'd never get rid of it. So he said, yeah, 12 and a half percent for five years, no matter what kind of a job you have, minimum wage or, you know, whatever. And it makes sense to me. But anyway, and then his final one, which makes absolutely no sense. He just threw this in, but it's silly. Uh, he calls it the, Gen the Jesse Ventura effect. And he basically says, uh, you know, people are going to go to the polls for mischief making, just like they did to uh, elect Jesse Ventura. You know, you're going to get these pranksters and practical jokers. Of, he calls it people with a dark sense of humor. People who have a dark sense of humor and voting for Ventura was their version of a good practical joke on a sick political system. This is going to happen again with Trump. Not really. Not really. People are angry. And when they're angry, they don't, they're not joking around. You know, he thinks that, you know, electing tr Trump will get these, a lot of these votes because people are in a playful mood, you know, or want to stick it to the, to the, uh, the establishment, you know, as a prank. Uh, no, these people are angry. It's anger is what's motivating people. Really, really a lot of anger. And not so much what's happening now, but what's going to happen down the road. People are very fearful. So now that's that other one is it makes no sense. So anyway, uh, that's that's all I want to say on this. Um, if you go to one of my earlier videos and you look at the uh, at the the um, the reasons I gave, which if I can find them here, I'm always losing stuff. Here we go. Here's basically the 15 reasons I gave. Secure borders, jobs, trade and balance, military, veterans care, drug epidemic, uh, inner city violence, political corruption, stupid wars, infrastructure, abortion, eh. Second Amendment, really important, business regulations, important, and then relations with Russia and China. Those are the 15, and there's others besides. These are just arbitrarily listening to Trump's speeches. I picked out 15, but there's probably 20 that he's making. And, um, you know, Michael Moore is not going to go anywhere near these. But he still predicts a Trump win, and so for whatever that's worth. Uh, so anyway, that's all I have to say on this, uh, on this subject for now. Keep this video nice and short. Um, and um, that's it for this. So thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.